Working with metals like copper, aluminum, and brass in a woodworking shop can be pretty straightforward. You can utilize the machines that you already have. Table saw, band saw, chop saw, routers. Let me show you what works for me. Now, I realize they make cutting fluid for aluminum, but WD-40 works really well. And I'm not adding very much, just a light coat. And yeah, you would think this would go everywhere, but again, I'm just putting a light film of oil just to help make that cut. Works really well. And undoubtedly, I'll get naysayers saying that that amount of oil is not doing anything. Yeah, it does. It makes a difference. I've tried it without and just a light film. And here, I just want to make a cut about halfway through. And these push blocks from MicroJig, they are fantastic. You can set them to the thickness of your material. Let's give this a go. Now the blade I'm using is designed for non-ferrous metals, so it has a negative hook, but you could use a regular table saw blade. I just like a designated blade for when I'm cutting aluminum or brass, copper. So off camera, I added a little bit more WD-40 right in that groove. And now I'm going to raise the blade. And we'll make another cut. It should go without saying that I'm wearing uh, hearing protection and absolutely good quality eye protection as well. And yeah, man, just like that, we've cut through half-inch aluminum at the table saw. Beautiful, clean, smooth cuts. All right, so this is the blade I'm using. It's just uh, it's designed for non-ferrous metals, right? Aluminum, copper, brass, gold. <laughs> and I just use one of these arbor bushings, right? Because this 12-inch blades are going to be pretty standard with a 1-inch arbor. And you can just get these to where it converts it to a 5 8 ID which is what that shaft is. But with a 12 inch blade, I can still use this on my 12 inch chop saw. So it makes it very versatile. And of course this saw blade won't go all the way down because 10 inch table saw, 12 inch blade, won't go all the way down, but you can use a spacer on top of the surface of the table saw. And I'll show you that in a bit. Now that I'm confident with the way the blade is reacting to the aluminum, I can cut that in one full pass after adding a little bit of oil. Now the pieces that I need are relatively small and I had some half inch plate scrap and sh kind of shorter pieces, but for this project, they worked out perfect. So now I need to square up all the ends and a chop saw would be ideal for this, but the blade's already on the table saw. So I thought I would use my aluminum miter fence with a stop. So how many of you have cut through your aluminum miter fence at the table saw? Probably not a big deal, uh, unless you have a saw stop, yeah? All right, so here I needed to cut some rabbits on the ends of all these pieces. So I grabbed a board, made sure two adjacent edges were 90 degrees, used that as a backer, and made all my cuts. And I'm not showing it, but I am dabbing WD-40 in all these uh, pieces of aluminum before I make the cuts. And when you're working with aluminum, you're going to have tiny little shavings all over your house. <laughs> This is the spacer that I was talking about earlier. Since I'm using a 12 inch blade, it won't drop down all the way. So I just make a plunge cut. This spacer has a cleat at the back edge. It holds it in place, but in addition, I'm gonna use this magnet. I use this for several different things, but makes a great um, hold down. Now I didn't show it and I didn't talk about it, but prior to 
making any of these grooves, I had a sample piece of wood that was the same width as the aluminum, and with that, I could do all my sample cuts and make, the, make sure that the curves were all in the right locations. Bit of a side note here, this magnetic hold down clamp, you can see there's sandpaper on the bottom, so it really grips the surface and that lever helps release it without having to slide it. There's a bit of aluminum on the bottom so it doesn't wear. I love that thing. Okay, so I'm gonna cut a rabbit on this piece of aluminum and you can see just how easy the table saw with a correct blade makes these cuts. You know, aluminum is such a beautiful, versatile material and it's, um, well, like I've mentioned, super easy to work with just your regular woodworking tools. All right, so this is what I'm creating. It's uh, some stops for this T-Track. I'm making a ton of these, so I'm trying to get the sizes, you know, figured out so I can mass produce them. Essentially, I'm cutting two out of each piece. And there's a good close-up of the pieces getting drilled. So I'll put a groove in this dude that I'm working on, a dado. I'll make it slightly deeper than the track and I'll have a nice, fantastic stop. So yeah, cutting aluminum. The table saw is pretty straightforward. Cuts really clean with the right blade, a little bit of WD-40. I plan on using this other chunk. This is one inch square aluminum, but it would have been a lot more work to achieve the same thing. And these stops really didn't need to be that tall. So these are about half inch. That's what this plate started out as half inch thick stock. The little tab or whatever you call it down here on the bottom fits in the channel and keeps, it'll prevent that from twisting. So yeah, they should work great. Yeah, man. These aluminum stops are part of a jig that I sell and I want them to be really clean. So here at my belt sander, I put on a 180 grit and I just touch up all the sides and put a light chamfer on all the corners just so everything's nice and clean and just, you know, really uh, make sure that I don't get anything out of square. And as you already know, T-Track can just simply be cut to length with the chop saw. And here I'm just drilling a few extra holes. This is about a seven foot tall display case for jewelry that I made years ago. And I made the four handles. And I just sliced it at the bandsaw. I believe this was quarter inch upper plate. And I used a scrap piece underneath it to keep the burrs from catching on the throat plate. I used some copper rod to create these standoffs and I drilled and tapped some threads at my metal lathe, but a drill press would work as well. Here you can see those standoffs, right? So basically a belt sander and a bandsaw to create those triangles, a little bit of lacquer, a couple coats of lacquer, and bam, beautiful. I believe I used Scotch-Brite to create that linear brushed look. The diamond shape on the doors was created one dimple at a time with a die grinder. The customer was thrilled and that made me happy. Another project, this time with brass, some brass bench dogs. So this is three quarter diameter brass, solid brass, and I needed a way to cut some small notches at the top that are angled at two degrees. So I made this funky jig to create that first cut that's angled at two degrees. So same jig. Everything's the same. I just laid it over and it's sticking out, right? That part's already cut. I lay this on the table and I can make that, make sure that that's parallel that way. I can rotate the blade back to 90, adjust the blade height and make another cut. I put this little magnetic block there to keep those little pieces from flying back and hitting me in the leg. The mass of the large chunk of walnut reduces vibration and the threaded knob keeps the dog in place. Beautiful, yeah. The small spring-loaded mechanisms are a bloom tip-on. 
beautiful and fun project. All right, on to cutting more aluminum at the chop saw. And then on to the edge sander to dress up the ends using a 90 degree stop. Yeah, I simply drilled and tapped my cast iron table to create that. All right, so this is a bit of a side note here. I am using my dad's milling machine to create one 90 degree face. You can see that power feed. My dad installed that power feed. Uh, retrofitted it actually but this is extruded aluminum and it's not always 90 degrees so I had to mill one face and I realized I could use a large face mill but rat running three passes worked and I know this isn't exactly woodworking but uh, I have access to my dad's machine shop and I love using his bridge port now I don't claim to be a machinist but these are dead on balls accurate 90 degrees let me show you what they're for. Now, occasionally you'll have to reference a domino machine off the face of a board rather than its edge. And these 90 degree domino decks, as I call them, offer that support. Magnetic clamping pad, vice grip. That is very solid and secure and greatly improves accuracy. So what I'm using here are the domino connectors for this large maple countertop and they need to be really accurate and that's when I made this first domino deck and I posted it on Instagram, people saw it and bam, the order started coming. Incidentally, the domino deck will fit the larger machine, the 700 as shown here and the DF500 as well. I'll leave a link in the description. All right, here I have some one inch square aluminum bar I'm squaring up the ends and I've got a little bit of a different project. I have this jig that fits over the bar and I'm going to be routing these pockets or cavities. So I'll just clamp that down. And anytime I get a chance to route outside, I do, especially when it's aluminum, right? So again, nothing tricky here. I have a half inch double flute bit. It's not a up cut, down cut. Uh, shear cut. It's not made for aluminum. It's just a regular old bit and it's doing fine. Here's a bit of a close-up, just a double flute, half inch bit. A little bit of WD-40. I have a 5 8 collar as a guide. And the way your router sounds is really a good indication of how it's acting or how it's uh, reacting to the cut that you're making. And I've noticed that just a little bit of WD-40 makes a huge difference. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm routing both ends of this long bar, and then I go and cut each end to the short length that I need for these little blocks that I'm making. I'll show you what they're for here in a bit. There's that jig, you can see the cleats, one on each side, so it holds it very secure. All right, now this type of fence may not be familiar to you, but if you own a Delta Unifence, you will understand my frustration with that factory nylon block. And I put that in place just to show you I actually don't have that on mine. These aluminum blocks, essentially, that little notch that I created with the router, it fits on the bottom of this part of the fence. Then there's a little bearing on the end. I just buy these in bulk. The large hole makes it easy to adjust the height. And then I secure through the block into the fence with a 5 16 by 18 thread. And bam, now we have a fence that glides effortlessly across the table. Now, of course, you'll have to make a little bridge. I use magnets in mine to hold it in place right in the T-slot. Clip that in place, and that allows the roller to bridge across that gap. Fabulous. So I typically make about 25 of these at a time after cutting them to length. I've made this special bolt with a sharpened tip. I can mark one of them and then set up stops at the drill press and drill them all. This is what I call my Delta Unifence roller assembly. Again, I'll leave a link in the description. 
And so there you have it, working with brass, aluminum, copper in a woodworking shop. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Hope you got some use out of this video. I would appreciate a comment, like, and subscribe. And as always, thanks a ton for watching.